A lot of you were super angry at this YouTube shorts I made, so I'm gonna address it in today's video. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, board certified OBGYN, author, educator, and the maker of controversial YouTube shorts. <laughs> I am actually really excited to make this video this week. And before we watch that together and I break it down for you, as well as the many responses you all had, go ahead and like, subscribe, turn on the bell so you never miss an upload. Okay, let's just go ahead and watch it together. Let me show you a simulation on how we turn breech babies. A breech baby is one that isn't head down, which is in general the safest way to be delivered vaginally. Here you can see the baby is butt down. To orient you up there is where mom's head would be. This procedure is called an external cephalic version or ECV. Using our hands, we can apply gentle pressure to encourage the baby to turn head down. With 4% of babies being breech at term, this procedure, which is done on labor and delivery, can help someone avoid a C-section. We can use spinal anesthesia to make it more comfortable and to increase chance of success like you see here. I love getting to do this. What questions do you have? Okay, a lot of you had questions and comments. At the time of this filming, it has 4.2 million views. This is just on YouTube. There's a lot more TikTok and Instagram. 165,000 likes and 2,000 comments. So let's talk about those comments. Okay, so external cephalic version or ECV or version, that's what you'll hear me um, describe it as. I was showing a simulation of, of what it could look like at an annual meeting where we had this model, which I think was made in Japan. It's the only model that I've seen that does it. A lot of you were super pissed off at me and let's talk about it because that's how we learn. And I think one of the biggest things that people commented, as you can see here, is that you were all really angry that I said gentle pressure. And I tried to say in the comments, the reason I said this is that's what I'm applying. You know, I'm not going in there and like, I don't know which wrestler did that, but that's what I'm applying. I did not at all cover what the person feels. And that I think is really important to cover. And I didn't at all. And so I could have done a much better job of doing that. I don't disagree at all. I also want to let people know that whenever you see a video about a simulation or a surgical procedure or everything, I just want you to know, please do not assume that anything that's in that is like the complete process, meaning like the complete education or the complete consenting, unless I'm literally making a video about here's how we consent. Like, I want you to understand. So it's not like Somebody shows up for this and we're like, oh my gosh, I love doing this. It's gentle pressure. Let's go. I promise you there's bigger conversation there. But I can see people were like, you're not showing what this accurately looks like. And we're going to talk about that. So it is true that I am applying gentle pressure. I'm never like pushing super hard or because if I am, then we're stopping because this is an elective procedure, which brings me to... The second comment a lot of people made, which is, you made this look too easy. Yeah, I wish everyone was as easy as this. Like, definitely, I don't disagree. In the world of simulation, when we're showing people stuff, we always start out with the easiest scenario and then, and then we level up. So I was just showing what it would look like. And honestly, sometimes it is this easy. And I know for those of you who've had this and it wasn't that way, that is not true for you. But there are cases where it actually is this easy. And it's usually somebody who's got a lot of amniotic fluid. The baby may have just been head down and was just breached. So it's not like they were always socked in in that breech position or they may already be sideways. So it actually can be this easy sometimes. And there were some people who did comment that, but yeah, for the most part, it's not, but it's like learning how to walk before you run. But I can, I can totally understand that feedback. And so the comments that people said that it really, hurt them that they screamed they almost kicked their doctors like it was worse than than childbirth or worse than a c-section and so they were really angry that I didn't address that or that I didn't make it look like that and I want to say that for people who experience that I am so sorry that you had this kind of experience when I do my complete counseling when I'm doing a version or working with another doctor who is one of the first things I always say is this is totally elective and so if this is too much for you we stop. Or even if you're telling me it's not too much for you, but I can tell that it is, we stop. Meaning that there are some people who were like, yeah, like I don't like the feeling of this, right? Especially you spend your whole pregnancy telling people to not touch your belly. And then here we are intentionally doing it. It's it's strange and weird. But I've had people who've said, it feels like a lot, but I want you to keep going because I want to get this done. And then there are other people who are like, nope, I do not like this at all. And I don't care. You need to stop. And for people who've not been listened to in those scenarios, I am so sorry. And that is on the medical professionals to do better, 100%. But I really think it's important to note that you were in the driver's seat here. I actually had one time where I was doing this and the person couldn't stop laughing because they were so ticklish. And she kept grabbing my hands. And I, you know, I was like, oh, I know you're ticklish, you know. Do you want me to keep going? Yes, because I, I always ask, do you want me to keep going? And 
after a couple times, even though she's like, I want you to keep going. I was like, you know what? We can't because you keep moving my hands away. And that's just not, it's just not going to work. We all were like kind of laughing at how funny it was. But my point is, is that this is an elective procedure. And if it is causing that much pain or discomfort, that's a sign that we need to stop. So I'm just highlighting that. Another comment I got, and I was actually really surprised about this. And that's why I love making content because it tells me like what the thoughts are out there, like what people think is the most concerning thing. And I, I probably should do a whole separate video on this. And that is, what if it wraps the cord around the baby's neck? Like, won't that do that? And this is called a nuchal cord. And I was so surprised that so many people think that that would be a risk of this and that it would be any different than if a baby was just moving on their own. Like that doesn't make sense in my head, but I also understand there's a lot of misunderstandings about nuchal cords in general. Did you know that up to like 30%, so almost one in three babies will be born with a cord around their neck. And almost always this causes no problems. Now I am not here to say that Every, every OBGYN, every midwife, we've delivered a baby where a nuchal cord was super tight or it was wrapped around too many times. And that led to either an emergency C-section or it actually led to a stillbirth. And those are so, so heartbreaking. And I acknowledge those that they happen. And I also want to say that those are also very rare and that the vast majority of babies that are born with a cord around their neck do 100% fine. So to answer the question, does this increase, does aversion increase your risk of having a cord wrapped around the baby's neck? And the answer is no, there's no data that shows that. And I would encourage people to think that moving a baby either passively with us or the baby moving on their own, I don't see how that would change it at all. So I hope that helps. Okay, lots of people who were saying that they were never offered an epidural or a spinal. And again, there were a lot of people who were really angry that I didn't address how painful this was. Was, and I tried to comment in saying that I did. I, I said that you could be offered anesthesia to make it more comfortable. And a lot of people still aren't doing that. And it's sad because we know that using medicine, what we call regional anesthesia, so medicine in your back, makes it more successful. So the overall success of aversion is somewhere between 50 to 80%, and a lot of it depends on the experience, but also the size of the patient, which way the baby's facing, where the placenta is, how much amniotic fluid, just the success rate of the person doing it. But we know that using an epidural or a spinal, you know, medicine in the back can make it more likely to work and it makes it less painful so it makes me so upset that more people are not being offered this. And here's just some numbers from one study that looked at, I think, six studies that with using a spinal or an epidural, the increase in success went from about 37% without to 60% with. Like, hello, like that's that's great. We need to be using more of this. Now, one thing I've heard from actually from OBGYNs who say, well, I don't want to use that because then that'll let me push too hard because the patient won't have that feedback that it hurts. And it could it could increase the risk of complications. It could increase the risk of something called placental abruption where the placenta is torn off the uterus. We have no data to show that. In many studies that have looked at this, it's equally as safe. This is my call out to my, to my partners here, my partners in crime that we do a better job at controlling pain for our patients. Okay, this comment broke my heart and I was shocked. I like didn't believe it. Not that I didn't believe you saying it, but I just couldn't believe that. People say that this is outlawed because it's so dangerous. So people saying that in their country, aversion is outlawed because it's so dangerous. So these people are just, they just undergo C-sections. Or in the United States, people saying, my doctor said those are too dangerous to do. I am so angry because there is no data to support this. And if you were just signing your patients up for C-sections, based on this completely wrong misconception, you are harming people because we know C-sections are not risk-free. They're major abdominal surgeries. You have increased risks of things like hemorrhage, infection, injury to organs, blood clots, strokes, heart attacks, death, as compared to a vaginal delivery. C-sections are great when we need them, but we should only be doing them when we need them. And they make your next pregnancy more high risk. Anyway, so this really bothers me. <laughs> and for those of you who are saying, well, then just do a vaginal breach birth, yes, and. The reality is, is that it's not an option in many places in the U.S. And I'm not saying that this should replace that, but it's a great tool. And if the person does not have access to a provider who does a vaginal breech birth, then yeah, you are signing them up for a C-section. So I want to read some stats here and you can write these down or you can commit them to memory or if you're an OBGYN watching this, please. So with aversion, the rate of severe risk, so something life-threatening is 0.2%. Super, super rare. Now, a lot of us who do these, you might think, well, the baby doesn't tolerate it and their heart rate goes down because we're monitoring them, we're doing ultrasounds. And it is true that up to 10% of babies, when we're doing aversion, their heart rates will go down a little bit. They're, you know, they don't enjoy the, the flipping process. Almost all of them come back up. And in fact, the emergency C-section risk related to this is less than 1%. So whenever we're talking to somebody about aversion, 
we don't pretend and be like, there's no risk. Of course, just like with any procedure, we talk about risk. So I would talk about the risk of pain. I would talk about the risk that when we're pushing, we push too hard and we cause your bag of water to break. We cause your baby to have concerning fetal heart tones. We cause placental abruption. Um, we do this and the umbilical cord prolapses or comes down if the bag of water breaks. And then I would say, and these risks are all exceedingly rare. And other than the temporary heart rate changes, which is about 10%, the risk of an emergency C-section is less than 1%, and the risk of these other things is less than 0.2%. And that's complete counseling. So the idea that in some countries they're outlawing this, or some doctors are not offering this, the reality is a lot of it's because people are afraid of getting sued, because we live in a society where lawyers sue us for everything just to see if it'll stick. Yes, there are absolutely times when lawsuits are legit, but I'm just saying that a lot of people practice in that mindset, and I, I feel for them. But no, this should not be outlawed at all. And then the very last thing is when I said this. I love getting to do this. So many of you were so pissed off at me saying, how could you love to do this to somebody? And what I meant, and what I think most of you understood was that I love getting to do something that helps somebody avoid a major abdominal surgery. I think it goes without saying that in a perfect world, I would never have to do it because every baby would be head down. My point is, is that I love getting to help somebody. And for those people who have done this on or done this with, and it works, they light up, like they are so thankful. So I'm gonna push back on that one a little bit and ask you to to maybe not be so, um, you know, jumping to like the cancel culture. Like, I can't believe you would say that. I mean, it's the same way that, you know, a trauma surgeon says, I love getting to save people's lives. Or a firefighter says, I love that I get called and I get to put out the fire. And if we weren't here and we didn't have these tools available, it would be a different outcome. So I would ask a little bit of grace with that one. That said, I totally understand that versions can be painful and uncomfortable for people. And I hope that after watching this video, you are empowered to know that if it's hurting that bad, you can and they should be stopping and that there are ways to even prevent this from happening and that increase your risk of it working. So I hope that helps. But go ahead and drop some questions, comments below. And you know what I also love? I love getting to make these videos and educating even when there are comments like that because it gives us a chance to chat. Okay, until next week, may all your babies be head down. May all your procedures not be painful. And I think that's enough for, for wishing for one week. Okay, bye-bye.